hey what's up guys this is your sir with another video and in this video we are gonna talk about heating effect of dicarboxylic acid okay so our today's topic is heating effect on dicarboxylic acid okay so this is our today's topic okay so let me tell you first of all what do you mean by dicarboxylic acid so dicarboxylic acids are nothing but the compounds or the molecules which are having two coh group two coh group two coh group means two carboxylic acid group okay and then what happens when we we'll just heated them okay so this is the triangle heating symbol okay so before starting this video i would like to tell you that whatever the trick i am giving you you have to follow this only there will be no changes otherwise it will just confuse you okay so whenever you're talking about dicarboxylic acid you have to remember these words these alphabet that is o m s g a p in short i can say you have to say ohms gap okay ohms gap so let me tell you here o stands for oxalic acid okay this m stands for malonic acid okay and this s stands for succinic acid this c stands for glutaric acid a stands for lipic acid and p stands for pimeric acid okay so you have to remember these words and these num in this way only okay and along with this you should also remember the code number which i am giving to this yeah surely i'll be telling you what that code number stands for for o it is 0 for m it is 1 for s it is 2 then 3 and 4 finally comes out to be 5 these numbers 0 1 2 3 5 represents what the number of ch2 group that is present in the dicarboxylic acid for example uh if it is an oxalic acid if it is an oxalic acid it has zero ch2 unit okay zero ch2 unit means it does not have ch2 unit and if you just look at the structure of oxalic acid it is c double bond o o h c double bond o o h after heating this simply you need to remove just the carbon dioxide okay so this is your carbon dioxide and along with the final product which is nothing but hcooh which is called as formic acid it is having an iupac name methanoic acid okay let's see for uh, the second acid which is called as malonic acid and as the code number for malonic acid is 1 it means it is having one ch2 unit okay so this is the structure of malonic acid now on heating we just need to remove the simple co2 molecule and this is our product Okay, so it is CH three COOH plus CO two. One thing you have to also keep in mind on heating at a higher temperature, formic acid you will be having CO two and H two. So 
Now let's have a fresh page so that we can start with even succinic acid, glutaric and adipic acid. Let's move on. So here is our succinic acid and code number for this is 2. It means it is having simply 2 CH2 units. Okay, so on heating succinic acid, now we have to remove only water molecule. Okay, so we'll be removing only this water molecule. So our final product is this particular compound and it is called as succinic. And hydride. Okay, so we'll move for the next one. The next one is glutaric acid, and the code number for glutaric acid is 3. Okay, so it means it is having 3 CH2 units. So on heating this, we have to remove the water molecule. So this is the removal of water molecule and finally we are having our product H2C CH2. This is called as glutaric and hydride okay and obviously in both the product will be also having co2 as a sorry water as a byproduct so you should remember here along with succinic and hydride will be having water as a byproduct so now we are having the second last one which is nothing but adipic acid Okay, and the code number for this is 4. It means it is having 4 CH2 units. So let's see. On heating this, you have to keep in mind, you have to remove now CO2 as well as water molecule okay so both the side product should be removed and finally we'll be having ch2 ch2 c double bond called as cyclo pentane okay and along with this, we'll be having CO2 plus H2. Okay. So let's move for the next one, which is nothing but pimeric acid. And in pimeric acid, the code number is 5. Okay. So it is. Five, which represents there are total five CH2 units. Okay. And as I've told you, while heating primary acid, also you have to remove. CO2 along with water molecule and finally we are having
this particular compound called as cyclohexanone along with water and carbon dioxide so this is all about the heating of dicarboxylic acid now even uh, the dicarboxylic acid which are similar to these kind of dicarboxylic acid you can also use this clue for them for example if you are having this particular dicarboxylic acid once again so this is your dicarboxylic acid so it is nothing but similar to uh, there is one CH2 unit so this is nothing similar to melonic acid and we know that on heating melonic acid we need to remove the CO2 molecule ok so we will be having this as an R product Okay, you can also have an example on this. So this particular dicarboxylic acid is having two CH2 unit, one over here, CH2, another one is here. So this is nothing but succinic acid. This acid is like succinic acid. On heating this, we have to remove water molecule so finally we'll be having c double bond o c double bond o this particular compound and this is called as anhydride and let me tell you the name of this particular acid it is called as thalic acid yes p is silent in this and if you are keeping both the coh group On opposite side means para where it will be called as tertalic acid so let's revise the whole trick for a better understanding so you have to remember these words ohms cap that is the alphabet is o m s g a ohms gap and the most important one is their code number that is 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so you have to keep one thing in mind while heating oxalic acid and melodic acid you just need to remove CO2 and when you will be heating succinic acid and glutaric acid you need to remove only water molecule and on heating adipic acid and pimeric acid you need to remove co2 plus h2 okay and in this two will be having ketone and in this two that is succinic and glutaric acid you will be having anhydride and in the first two you will be having normal acid that is carboxylic acid ok so this is the simplest and the easiest clue for heating of dicarboxylic acid ok so I hope you understood the video thoroughly ok don't forget to press the bell icon so that whenever I am making a video you will be getting notified and please comment so that if you are having doubt related to any of the chemistry topic, I'll be able to make a video on that. Okay. Do share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.